Hunter coming to you with another video that is yoga for runners, yoga for seniors, yoga for beginners, and yoga for you. Today I'm going to do a series of yoga poses that I find highly effective in dealing with the piriformis muscle, which is the muscle that runs from the base of your sacroiliac joint over to your outer hip. If you have problems with any kind of hip issues while you're running a tightness in the hip, or as I have sciatica, you're going to want to take a look at some of these stretches that you can do to loosen up that piriformis muscle and relieve that sciatica that it does cause. So I always start with some basic breathing exercises just to limber up and loosen up. So we're going to raise our hands up over our heads slowly. Inhale as we raise them up. And then as we exhale, lower our arms. When you do this in real time, try and make your exhales twice as long as your inhales. They will help clear the toxins from your lungs and bring in more of that fresh oxygenated air that we all need to get along. So the first thing we're going to do is some side stretches. Again, we're working on the hips. So put your hands up over your head. Hold on to, to the fingertips and just gently lean to one side. And you're going to hold that pose there. You should feel it on the outside of the hip to the direction in which you're leaning. So in this case, I'm leaning to my left. I would feel it on the left hip. And then we're going to reverse it and lean the other way. And you're going to feel it on the outside of the hip that's being stretched. You can repeat these as many times as you like, but again, this is more of a warm up. And you're going to hold it there for about 10 to 15 seconds as you do it in the warm up phase. Now, a variation on this that allows you to go deeper. Again, stand with your feet about, shoulder width apart, put your hand on the hip, and then gently push the hip as you stretch to the left. And again, reverse it, put the hand on the hip and just gently push it uh, in the opposite direction of which you're stretching. Again, that'll emphasize that stretch that you're doing there. And then the next variation that you can go on to from here with regard to the hips is to start bending forward as you do this and reaching across to again stretch the outer side of the hip but also involve the glute at this point so you'll start to feel the stretch in the back of your hip and the glute don't be afraid to bend your legs if you need to don't worry about that I'm 70 years old, so uh, for me, doing it straight legged is never a possibility. So again, you just do gentle stretches side to side before we move into some of the other things that we can do. I'm going to do a gentle back bend next, and we're going to put our hands up over our heads and hold one with the other. Lean back to a point where it's comfortable. And here you're going to start to feel the stretch in the front of your quad muscles. And oftentimes when we have problems in the back, uh, lower back, or in our glutes, or our hips, it's because the muscles in the front, the quad muscles, are tight. We're going to put our fingers, uh, interlace them behind our back and push our shoulders up. If you want to set a goal of touching your toes, this is a great stretch for it because there are several different things that come into play when you're trying to touch your toes. I bring my arms out in front, I go into what I call a diver pose. 
which is look like a, uh, a swimmer on a starting box getting ready to, to dive in. And I want to interlock my elbows and just rock side to side to uh, elongate the stretch. But with regard to touching your toes, your shoulders play a real big role in that. If your shoulders are tight, you'll never touch your toes. Same with your glutes and with your hamstrings. They all come into play when you're trying to bend forward. So again, gentle back bend. Interlock your hands behind your back. Push your shoulders up. Put your arms up to pull your shoulders down. Go into that diver pose. Interlock your elbows. Rock to side to side to loosen up the glute muscles, and then just let your hand go down. From there, we're going to go into another set of hip stretches. So we want to start out with our feet pointed in the direction like we were going to do a warrior pose, and then just push our hip forward. And you're going to feel the stretch in your glute on your forward leg. So again, in the back of your, your hip and in the glute is where you'll feel the stretch. You'll also feel the stretch in the groin on the trailing leg. And you can reverse that. So what you, in yoga, what you do on one side, you do on the other. And again, you want to hold these for about 15 seconds. 15 to 20 is the optimum amount where you'll get the maximum from each stretch without um, doing any kind of damage. So again, side to side. A variation on this is to go into that warrior pose where you will be looking out over your front leg and just holding your arms up for balance. It's going to work both as a stretch and a balance exercise. And a variation on this that you can do is to just Lean your elbow on that forward leg and raise your hand up to stretch the side. Again, you're going to be stretching your side muscles down to the hip and the glute on the opposite side. And you can reverse it. Going in the opposite direction. Again, holding it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Go up and over, and again, you'll feel the stretch on your entire side as you do this. Just a variation. From there, we can go into a forward bend. Again, we're looking at stretching the muscles around the hips. So we're just going to bend over, let our body weight hang down. You know, walk our hands on our elbows. You can rock side to side if you like. You can bend your knees as much as you like. Try and stretch in, uh, straighten the knees out and you'll feel the stretch up in the back of your, your uh, quads, I'm um, sorry, your hamstrings and the attaching point for your hips. And then reach forward. Raise your arms up. As you look, this is going to give you a little twist on your hips. Stretching the hip rotators as we do this. Just doing them side to side. Again, trying to get all the tendons, all the ligaments, and all the muscles that work the hips and the piriformis area together uh, to get them loose. So one other thing we'll show you right now is what's called a triangle pose. It's another variation on that warrior pose where your uh, forward facing foot is uh, going in one direction, the other one is perpendicular to that line. And in the triangle pose, we're going to just stretch forward with this. It's a little variation. 
but again, this is going to stretch the hip rotators and the tendons on the trailing leg. I'll try that one more time on the other side, just to make sure that we do on one side what we do on the other. I'm going to move down to the floor now and show you a couple of floor based stretches for the hips and piriformis area. We we'll start with putting our feet out, point, toes pointed out, sitting up as straight as we can, and then we're going to rotate our hips side to side, knees side to side. And hold them there. You will feel the stretch in the hip joint as you do this, as you're isolating your hip joint. So you're basically rotating your hips in the socket. Start to slide forward. Uh, remember, just to try and stay as upright as you can. Then a variation on this is to go forward and bend over that forward leg, again stretching the glute, and just holding that there for about 10 or 15 seconds. You will feel the stretch in the glute as you do that. Again, rotate side to side, and Stretch out over the other leg. From here, there's a number of different possibilities. The first of which is to do the stretches for the outside of the hip. You can do these figure fours, sitting figure fours. This is going to stretch the hamstring on the forward leg and the hip on the uh, one that is folded under. And the more you can lean forward, the better. Then you want to cross your folded leg over the knee of the other, hug it with your opposite arm, and turn around to the side. You'll feel the stretch on the outside of the hip on the leg that is crossed. Try and stay upright and lean into your, your leg that is crossed over. Do it over on the other side. Don't be concerned if you have less flexibility on one side than the other. Most people do have less flexibility on one side. If you notice on here, my knee is much, much higher on this side. The other side, I can get it down to the ground. This side, the ligaments on the outside of the hip are particularly tight. They have been for 40 years, 50 years. I just can't get them down. So you cross the leg over, hug it with your opposite arm, and twist to the face to back. You can also put your feet together as you sit up. Try to push your knees to the ground. You can use your elbows for leverage. This is going to stretch both the outside and the groin area as you do this. And then you can just recline back. We're going to go to a reclining pigeon pose where we put one ankle over the knee of the other side and push it, well, push it gently against the knee to stretch the outside of the hip. And then we can put our hands behind the knee and pull up. And you're going to feel the stretch right on the outside of that hip and the piriformis area. The variation on this is to rock side to side gently to increase that stretch. 
Then we're going to put the foot back down on the ground, gently pull the knee to the side. As you get lower, you can put your toes behind the knee. And again, stretching the outside of the hip, those tendons, the ligaments, the IT band, all of the things that help control the stability of the hip, that when they get tight, they hurt. You can go into a half happy baby, which is where you put your hands under the balls of your feet and hold it. You'll feel the stretch in the glute as you do this. And then you do some nerve flossing for your sciatic nerve by putting your hands behind your knee, extending your leg up, so pushing the heel towards the ceiling, pushing the toes downward as you lower the leg, heel up, toes down. What this does is it moves that sciatic nerve in its channel. Oftentimes you'll hear people say that they have a pinched nerve. What they really mean is that there's something that is impinging the movement of that nerve as it travels in its canal back and forth ever so slightly. So this will help uh, free up the nerve if there is an impingement there. Again, it's called nerve flossing, like flossing your teeth. Don't know how that term came about, but it, uh, that's what they call it. And after you do about 10 of these, just again, put your hand on the side of your knee and with a full leg extension, let your, your foot roll down to the side and hold it there. Again, you'll feel the stretch on the side where the piriformis ties into your uh, outer hip. Again, what we do on one side, we do on the other. So we start with the reclining pigeon. And I push the knee away. And this is where you will again see a difference in flexibility side to side. This knee will not go anywhere near as far towards uh, perpendicular as the other leg will. So I know that my right hip is incredibly tight. Because of that, I've got sciatic problems and performance problems on the left side. You can put your hands behind your knee and pull it up. Rock from side to side if you like. Just to, again, put the emphasis on different tendons and ligaments and muscles as you do this. Pull your knee gently towards the floor, hook your toes behind your knee and again pull it down so you can feel the stretch on the outside of the leg. Go into half happy baby, feel the stretch in your glute as you do this. And move on to the nerve flossing. Heel up, toes pointed down as you come down. Heel up as you go up. And again, I typically do about 10 of these. If you like, you can try and pull your knee back further to get a hamstring stretch in as you're doing this. So hamstrings all tie into the hips as well. So if your quads are tight or your hamstrings are tight, you'll probably have lower back problems and possibly sciatic issues. So again, it's more of a full body stretch that we're working towards. And then after about 10 of those, just keep your legs straight as you rotate to the side. There's one more thing that we can do while we're on the floor. Let's put our hands behind our knees, point our heels up to the ceiling, and then just let our, the weight of our legs fall towards the floor. 
And this is another stretch for all of the connective tissue around the hips. We can fold them into there. Whenever you come up, always roll to your side. Don't try and just jump up. Two more things that we want to do, and then we'll call it a day. First is back bridges, which are going to stretch, uh, stretch our quads. So we're going to put our feet closer together and then raise our hips and raise them a little more. You can roll up onto your shoulder, that increases the stretch, but you're going to feel it right on the quads as you do this. You can do as many of these as you like, anywhere from 10 to 50, whatever is comfortable for you. And again, do it at your own speed. Hold it as long as you want when you do get to the top, squeezing your glutes together as you do that. And you're going to find that you're going to be stretching your quads and your hip flexors. And then lastly, one of the most uh, beneficial stretches that I've found for the hamstrings is to use a couple of yoga blocks, if you have them. Kneel on one knee, put the other foot forward, and just lean forward. You'll feel the stretch on your hamstrings as you do this. Because again, everything's connected. So we may as well try and get everything as loose as we possibly can to start the day. And again, what you do on one side, you want to do on the other. So we're going to go and stretch the, the hamstring on the other side as well. These yoga blocks are very inexpensive and they're probably one of the best things that you can get in terms of an aid for yoga. I have a couple of yoga mats here and the yoga blocks. I like the yoga blocks because if you do a downward facing dog, at my age, it's hard to put your fingers, uh, your fingers on the mat and do this, but they allow me to bend over and to keep the heels on the floor as I do it. Actually walk forward and increase the stretch. Again, these are stretches for your hamstrings, which play a big role in your flexibility. We always end the same way we started, by doing some deep breathing exercises. Again, to clear out the toxins that have accumulated through this yoga flow. Get the oxygen in there to replenish the oxygen that was depleted during the exercises. And to get everything feeling just much better than it should or did at the beginning of the routine. So again, this is David, the Timeless Runner. If you like these videos, please click on the like button. If you want to see them when they first come out, uh, check on subscribe. I usually do one narrated video each week, and I do yoga every day in the, the YouTube shorts, so you can follow me on that as well. Again, thanks a lot. It's David, the Timeless Runner. Have a great day.